Hey, welcome to 28 Tops, Cop Supporting Gun Rights. I'm Keith, and in this episode, we're going to teach you how to paint your rifle. Okay, first things first, uh, painting your rifle. Uh, for I'm doing a um, Daniel Defense Mark 18 in this particular for this particular rifle. I just bought it yesterday, and uh, we're going to paint it up. The color scheme that I'm going to use is set for southwestern Idaho, which is high desert. So wherever you are is how you're going to do it. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is start disconnecting anything that you don't want paint on. So here I've got an EOTech. It's not a great EOTech, but I don't want to get paint on it because I'm probably going to put it on another weapon uh, later on down the line. Uh, when I get something more permanent for this, I'll paint that in the same scheme. Um, so I'm going to take my sights off. Um, they're already kind of in the color scheme I'm going to get anyway, so I'll take those off. My sling, I don't want paint on that. I've got a brace on the back. Um, I don't want that strap that goes around my arm. I don't want that to get uh, any paint on it. Uh, my silencer, I know people are painting silencers. Uh, I choose not to paint my silencer. Uh, I think either doing a wrap or uh, Cerakoting it is a much better option because uh, when you paint it, it just when you're doing high uh, high levels of fire, it's going to start uh, turning different colors and stuff. And it'll do it with Cerakote too, but at least Cerakote lasts longer. Um, next up, what you're going to do is you're going to start putting tape on your rifle. Now, in this, I'm going to keep my rifle all in one piece. Um, I'm not going to separate up my rifle um, and let it hang. I don't care. I'm going to beat the crap out of this rifle. Um, we're going to torture it. We're going to do whatever. It, it's it's a rifle. It's not going to sit in the safe. So um, literally, I put it on the ground. I tape up the areas that I don't want paint to get on the inside. So the mag well. Um, I tape the muzzle device because I, I'm going to run this suppressed almost always. So I don't want paint to get into the suppressor on the inside. Um, the muzzle device is thrashed anyways. Um, it's been beat up pretty hard. Um, I am going to put tape on the numbers on my uh, upper receiver, just so or the little address numbers, just because uh, I just want to be able to see where the numbers are at when I put stuff back on. Um, so we're just going to tape those kind of critical areas. And then after that, you can, uh, once you get it all taped up, you're going to put on your base layer. Now for my base layer, I'm using tan. Again, I'm in the high desert, so there's just tan grass everywhere. Um, I do go up into the mountains. I live very close to the forest, um, so I go up to the forest frequently. But even there, there's a lot of brown and uh, tan up there as well. So it'll blend in just fine. And if I go somewhere like, let's say, northern Idaho, where it's all green, fine. I'm going to paint it again because it's just a rifle and I don't, you know, it's paint's not going to hurt it, so I'll just put green down on it and camouflage it up the best that I can. Um, so I'm just going to soak it on uh, with uh, tan uh, paint. I use Krylon paint. I really like Alumahide uh, from Brownells. I'll put a link in, in here. I'll put uh, Alumahide on things that I know I'm not going to change the color of the rifle. So as an example, I've got a precision rifle that's stainless steel. And I don't like stainless, so we're going to use alumahide. We're going to use green so it matches the stock. Uh, I'll put a video up on that later. It's a bolt action precision gun. Um, I will go ahead and put um, alumahide on that because we're never going to change the color on that. And I want I don't want it stainless. I want the base color to be green to match the stock. So uh, if you're like so as an example, when I was a sniper on my sniper team, we knew we were never going to leave my city, so we used uh, alumahide. To paint the uh, to paint the rifle, uh, just we want something a little bit more permanent. But hey, Krylon's going to work here. You don't have to do any kind of primer. You don't have to do any overcoat to that. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You're just going to soak it down. Um, so we're going to do both sides. I don't care about it drying before I flip it over because, um, to be honest, it it, <laughs> it it's going to have imperfections everywhere, and I'm okay with that. You don't want it to look pretty. Um, 
so here what I'm going to do is I'm just doing two colors. I'm going to do brown, a dark brown, and I'm going to streak that across kind of diagonally. A lot of people like doing this. Um, I think it's a good, uh, I think it's just a good way of doing it. You honestly, you do whatever you want. I mean, uh, my sniper partner, he liked taking leaves from foliage from the area that we worked and he would lay that down on top and then spray over the leaf. Um, and I think that worked really well. Um, I think that's a great way of doing things. This is just my preference. So I'll do those diagonal uh, brown streaks across the rifle on both sides. Don't forget the bottom and the top. And then what I do is I use this net. It's a sniper's veil. Um, I had this when I deployed. I actually still use it to cover equipment when I'm out in the sun and stuff. Um, there's dried paint all over it because I painted so many guns with this. And what I do where I've got dark brown, I'll lay it down and where there's dark brown, I'll take tan and just spray lightly over where there's uh, dark brown. And then where there's tan, I'll take that dark brown and spray over the veil on that. So I basically have brown on tan and tan on brown. And you'll see that what it does, it gives this kind of, I don't know, I, I really don't know how to describe it. It's, it's kind of got like this reptile effect to it, you know. Uh, it's funny, Cryptic is uh, here in uh, southwestern Idaho as well, but, uh, you know, it's kind of gives that kind of a cryptic-ish look, kind of, if like it was the Walmart version. Um, but anyways, uh, it's a cheap, easy way to do it. You can see that uh, this whole project took me 15 minutes. That's it. Um, people ask, how do I get it, the worn look on it? You know, that battle worn or whatever you want to call it. It's from use. You're just going to beat the crap out of it. If you use Brownells Alumahide, you don't get that look from it. And I, I personally like Alumahide if you're never going to change the color on it. I've got these stencils that are kind of a multicam pattern. I've seen people do a duck hunter pattern. Um, you could do tiger stripe. You could do whatever you want, man. Uh, you can buy the stencils that just you peel it and you stick it on there and you spray paint over it and then peel it back off. Um, you can do that. I just didn't want to spend any money on this and I know it's going to get painted again. So uh, super easy way to do it. Uh, you can do your bolt gun, uh, like all your hunting rifles and stuff. Um, you can do all that. Super easy to do. Uh, let me know uh, what you think in the comments because the comments help our search optimization. It helps people find us. So just let us know what you think in the comments and that's it. Stay safe. Have a great week.